Uh, today's uh, video, I'm, I'm doing conceptual question averages. I hope you are liking this conceptual question series. And uh, we, have, we have made a playlist for all the conceptual question uh, videos that are there. So you can actually go through uh, them. And we'll, we'll obviously try to bring a lot more as we keep going ahead with this channel. And uh, today's uh, topic, a lot of people had requested me. Uh, I'm taking some questions on averages. And uh, let's start with the first question. The first question says, the average marks of a, of a student in 10 papers are 80. So he's given 10 papers and his average are 80. So this is basically using the, the construct that you know the number of readings and you know the average. So the formula to be used here is n into average is equal to total. So what happens is from this statement, you get the total marks that he has scored, which is 800 in 10 papers. And then it says, if the highest and lowest scores are not considered, the average is 81. So you have to realize from the input from the first uh, statement, uh, when you look at this statement, you realize that uh, when, when we remove the highest and lowest uh, marks, uh, you are basically talking about eight papers. And eight, in eight papers, the average is 81. So eight into 81, which will mean that in these eight papers, he has scored 648 marks, right? And uh, in the 10 papers, he has scored 800 marks. And averages, one of the structures which is very common is that you, you have a group and that group is broken into two parts and the sum of this part plus the sum of this part is equal to the total part. So this is a very common structure that you face in averages and what has what is to happen here is 648 plus the highest score plus the lowest score is equal to 800. This is the structure. So this is the second group and this is the group of eight papers. Now the question further says the next trigger in the question is his highest score is 92. So the moment I, I know this 92, I know that the sum of this is 740, uh, 648 plus 92. So naturally the lowest score comes out to be 60. I know that that's what they're going to ask me before I actually uh, <coughs> read the question. And uh, that's the answer to this question. Let's have a look at the second, second one. In Rajdhani Express, there are 10 bogies which carry, carries an average of 20 passengers per bogey. So, Again, from this input, you are getting the total number of passengers in the, in the train, which is basically 10 into 20, which is 200. And then it says, and, and there are 10, 10 bogies, right? So this is one input that you get. And the average number of passengers is 20, and total number of passengers is 200. If at least 12, 12 passengers are sitting in each bogey, and none of the bogey has equal number of passengers, then maximum, how many passengers can be accommodated in a bogey? So this is a variable, multiple variable situation, which is where, where you have to maximize the value. So these kind of questions are very common nowadays in aptitude exams. CAT has started this trend, but this trend has gone into all aptitude exams, whether you talk about IP mat, UPSC, CSAT, you talk about uh, banking, etc. These kind of questions which are talking about maximization, minimization of variable. I mean, hota kya maths question mein, if you have two equations, two unknowns, you can so solve it to find the answer. But if you've got more unknowns than you've got equations or situations given in the question, then you have variables inside the question and those variables can keep shifting up and down. So that's the, the kind of question you do. Uh, this, this is. So the reaction that you need, the thought process you need here is that <coughs> you've got 10 bogies and let's say this is the bogey with the largest number of passengers. So if I want to maximize this number, I have a constraint in this question that 10 bogies have a total of 200 passengers. So, this 200 passenger total is This is fixed. And the other constraint is that there are at least 12 passengers in each bogey. That means I might have one bogey with 12 passengers. Now, the, the logic in this question to be adopted is, given the 200 is, is fixed, I cannot change that, I cannot increase that. If I have to maximize this number, I have to minimize these. If minimize it, then it maximize it. That's the logic. And the minimization condition, is I cannot put 12, if I put 12 in one bogey, I cannot pull 12 again in a second bogey. So every bogey has a different number. So I'll have to minimize these numbers using this arithmetic progression of consecutive numbers. So 12 to 20, so iska, these are nine numbers. And the average of this, the, you can treat it as a, a arithmetic progression with an average of 16. So nine into 16 is 144, is the total of these nine numbers, which means that the maximization that we need for our 10th number is 56. This is the maximum value that the 10th number can take. Let's have a look at the third one. This is a very standard common question. 
और इसको एक बार देख लो ये ऑलमोस्ट एवरी एग्जाम में आया हुआ है ये क्वेश्चन कैट में भी आया हुआ है पास में एंड ऑल अदर एग्जाम्स में दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू नो इन द एग्जाम दिस इज़ अबाउट फिक्स कॉस्ट एंड वेरिएबल कॉस्ट टोटल एक्सपेंसिव ऑफ बोर्डिंग हाउस पार्टली फिक्स एंड पार्टली वेरिंग लीनियरली विद द नंबर ऑफ बोर्डर्स सो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट द वेरिएबल स्टॉक टू बोर्ड हेयर इज द टोटल एक्सपेंसिस ऑफ फिक्सड एक्सपेंसिस प्लस वेरिंग एक्सपेंसिस and the varying part of the expenses are varying linearly with the number of borders so so you have to i mean you have to use a little bit of ratio proportion and variation in this so some constant into n which where n is the number of borders this is the total expenses of the boarding house the question says the average expend expenditure is 700 when there are 25 borders so the reaction to this is if the average expense is 700 when there are 25 borders it means that the total expense is 725 which is <coughs> uh, what 17500 25 sevens are 175 with a double zero yeah 17500 is the total expenses which comprises of fixed expenses plus 25c where c is the constant the, the variable con variance constant and uh, 25 is the number of borders in this case and then it says the average expense is 600 when there are 50 borders so for 50 borders there is 600 average expense so it means that 600 into 50 which is 30000 has to be the fixed expense plus 50 times c so basically if you if you look at this you can see that 25c is 12500 you don't need to really solve it as an as a mathematical equation of linear equations uh, linear simultaneous equation ka solving as zarurat nahi logically dikh raha hai ki 12500 yahan bad raha hai yahan only only difference on this side is 25c is taraf only difference is the increase of 25c is taraf the only difference is the change of 12500 so you automatically get that uh, 25c is 12 12500 which means that the value of c must be 500 so So in that case, the equation becomes f, and, and if c is 500, you can work out that f 500 into 55, 25,000. The value of f must be 5,000. So our equation of expenses is 5,000 plus 500 c. So the question is asking, what is the average expense per border when there are 100 borders? So at 100 borders, first find the total expense. The total expense is uh, sorry, sorry, 500 n. this should read 500 into n c is 500 so this is the total expense so the total expense at at 100 is going to be 55000 the question is not asking the total expense for 100 borders the question is asking average expense per border when there are 100 borders so i'll have to divide this by 100 because this is the total expense so if i divide this by 100 my answer will come out to be 55 uh uh what 550 per border right double zero gets cancelled and the answer comes out to be 550 per border that's the answer to this question let's look at a couple of more questions in this this is a age based average age based question and uh, this is very common again you need to understand the structures and the thinking behind this the average age for couple is 24 years 24 saal a couple ka average is 24 years hai so what you what it means is inka total age 48 hai <coughs> right and the average is 24 and there are two people right now teen variable hai yahan pe ek hai average age dusra hai total age aur teesra hai and and in, ye age wale jo questions hote hain these age kind of questions inko tumko uh, you should be solving them on the number line on, on the on the timeline not the number line on the timeline so you have to build a timeline so that you get control of of the movement of of ages and and people in this so this is the starting situation after the first and second child were children twins were born that means they would have been born on the same day the average age of the family became 13.5 years so what is happening here <coughs> do bachche paida hue twins paida hue twins are born so now there are four people in the family with an average of 13.5 so we have on the timeline some time later i've got a total age of 54 for four people which is why the average is 13.5 so when i look at this uh, this movement why has the average why, why has the num total age shifted from 48 to 54 because there are two people here 
and when when uh, when time passes the age of both people increases so since the total age has increased by 6 from 48 to 54 and it's two people it means that the number of years in the interim must be 3 years <clears throat> now this is the situation four people in the family two twins who are 0 0 two uh, the the parents who are 27 years uh, on average of 27 not not 27 each an average of 27 for them and uh, uh, not 27 27 each but an average of 27 for those those two uh, children for those two people 0 0 for the two children and this is the situation now in the family aage kya bol raha the average of the family just after third child was born was 13.2 so now again timeline ko aage elapse karo and five people are there and the average is 13.2 ek third child born ho gaya so there are two parents and two original children and third two twins and now now third child is born so five people ho gaye 13.2 average hai to total 66 ho jayega the total will be 66 aur is 66 mein again if you see ye jo 12 years plus 12 years hua hai yahan pe in the total age has happened because char log ka age equally bada hai so each person ka age increase would be 3 years because that's the only way if there are four people and everybody's age increases by plus 3 you get a plus 12 on the total age so so again that means this timeline is again 3 years right that's the next reaction then the third you have to do more of the same the average age of the family after the fourth child was born is 16 years so <clears throat> fourth child born means now there are six people in the family right please remember yahan pe fifth person is zero zero age aur ye dono bachche jo hai 3 saal ke ho gaye and the parents became average age 30 here so after the fourth child was born it means the family now become six people right and uh, uh, family planning to the white laga di inhone but anyway coming, coming back to to this thing the fourth child was born six people average is 16 to 96 years ho gaya so yahan pe jo plus 30 was same same variable the total age has gone up by plus 30 and there were five people jin ka age badh raha tha to chhatta chhatra abhi pehla liya right so that means this timeline is 6 years पाँच लोग का एज अगर छः छः साल बढ़ेगा तभी टोटल थर्टी ईयर्स बढ़ेगा सो दिस टाइम लाइन सिक्स ईयर्स सो थ्री ईयर्स देर थ्री ईयर्स देर थ्री ईयर्स सिक्स ईयर्स देर एंड देन नाउ दिस इज द एवरेज एज ऑफ द फैमिली नाउ नाउ द करेंट एवरेज एज ऑफ द फैमिली इज नाइनटीन ईयर्स दैट मीन्स इफ आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग इट टू द करेंट डेट आई टू ब्रिंग द टाइम लाइन आई हेड बाई अनदर थ्री ईयर्स बिकॉज ओनली देन विल द करेंट एवरेज बिकम नाइनटीन सो दिस इज द सिचुएशन द क्वेश्चन बिंग आस्ट इज वॉट इज द करेंट एज ऑफ द ट्विन चिल्ड्रेन So twin children, remember they were born here. So they have elapsed three years plus six years plus three years. So they are twelve years old. That's the answer to this question. Or ages ko questions ko achhe se kar lena. Mere book mein bhi kafi questions hain ispe. Make sure that you do this well because there will be uh, a lot of questions on this in all exams and all placement papers. Sab sab jab aap aata hai, so you should know how to do it. A very simple structure rehta hai. Once you understand the structure, it's very easy to do. Uh, this is average speed. Uh, इसका बेस्ट अप्रोच होता है टोटल डिस्टेंस बाय टोटल टाइम सो व्हाट यू डू इज यू यू अज्यूम अ डिस्टेंस सो दैट सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज ही इज ट्रैवलिंग हाफ इज जर्नी बाय ट्रेन एट 80 किलोमीटर्स पर आर हाफ ऑफ द रिमेनिंग विद बस एट 40 एंड द रेस्ट विद साइकिल एट एट ट्वेंटी सो द इमीजिएट थॉट यू शुड गेट इज एट इफ आई टेक माय टोटल जर्नी टू बी वन तो मेरे इंडिविजुअल कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ द जर्नी विल बी एट्टी 40 half of the remainder and half and the remaining half and the rate set which in time speed distance ka distance upon time uh, speed gives me time right so if i want to find total distance i have assumed the total distance is 160 to agar mere ko time mil jayega so is 160 ko time se divide kar dunga to i'll get the answer so i just have to divide these distances by the speed by the respective speeds to find how much time he is taking so he is taking one hour here one hour here and two hours here so basically total time is 4 hours which means <coughs> that the average speed is 160 by 4 which is 40 or best approach for uh, average speed questions is total distance by total time koi aur approach mein mat jao allegation bhi lagta hai usme kabhi kabhi wo 2s1 s2 upon s1 plus s2 formula bhi lagta hai for two speeds and equal distances but uh, if you want to uh, go into an uh, into a average speed solution where 
speeds are changing, there are three, four speeds and time, distances are different from each other. Best approach is the is the Sasta Suvista time, total distance by total time wala, wala approach because that is the approach that works best. Only thing you, the vision you need is what uh, distance should I assume so that the calculations become easy. Right, so I hope this was uh, valuable for you and I'll come back with more for you uh, in the next video. Thank you so much. Goodbye.